Uh, you've either got her as a uh, faculty member or she's just been around. Um, so thanks for uh, coming today. Um, and also, uh, Seth and Brooke have graciously agreed. This is, you know, some of you who aspire to leadership, Brooke's in leadership, but that's part of why she's on this panel is because she's uh, part of the leadership on a committee that I'm on. And so I was like, okay, you know, you're on. So you got to take the responsibility with, uh, with the leadership as well. So why don't you guys come on up? Um, and and I asked uh, I asked uh, Dr. Holmes um, earlier this week if he just kind of you know kick us off and just kind of give us a brief you know overview of some of the things that uh, how did I ask you what what was the, what was the topic I remember sitting in your office talking about this so I know I know I did yeah just some things that we're learning and we'll we'll just go from there <laughs> so. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've told some of you this before, but when I was in college, Seth's age, a uh, little younger than that, I, I thought I was, I was pretty cool, you know what I mean? I, I had some things figured out, and, and um, you know, then I got married, and I realized I'm a selfish jerk. I mean, because you just live so close with this woman, and it's just like all my airs just come out. You can't hide them. And then, you know, you kind of figured I got marriage out, and, and things are going well, and, and then we had kids, and I realized I'm still a selfish jerk. We both are such selfish jerks. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the kids, you know, because you have kids, and, and they're crying at 2 in the morning, and you sit there pretending like you're asleep, hoping the other one gets up to go get the kid. It's like, well, this what happens. is that? This is, like a, this is like a junior high response, you know what I mean? Anyway, but you're just exhausted, and, and then... And just even this last week for me has been humbling because I just, again, I just, things come up that I'm still a selfish jerk. It just... We both are selfish jerks. <laughs> so we, we just struggle and it's just, it's just this ongoing process of being redeemed and in that sense being saved from myself and my own selfishness every day. You know what I mean? So, and, and you know, relationships are... are no different than a lot of things in life. You make choices, you adopt attitudes, and you, it sets you on a tra trajectory, a direction. And uh, you're foolish if you think today's decisions in your relationships don't connect to tomorrow's reality, because that's just the way it is. So um, we've reaped a lot of benefits from, from a lot of those good decisions, and, and um, you know, kids are doing well, and, and you know, we're doing well, and all around us, just this last week, a good friend was like, her husband found another woman, and, and solid Christian woman, and you know, author and stuff, we're like, how does that happen? So it's, it's a landmine out there, and if, if um, you know, you just have to, you have to go in submitting to Jesus and um, being good at the whole forgiveness thing. One more thing that makes this unique um, different than other decisions. A lot of other decisions you can kind of reset and let's go again. Marriage, we believe, is a lifelong commitment, and we don't think you reset and start with another person. We reset with each other, and we, so the relationships that you choose now, they're for life when you get married. Small group table at church Sunday, um, one of the guys said he was in the gym, and, and a guy that was on the tra treadmill next to him said, yeah, I just got married, and um, She's like a starter wife in five years, I'm gonna find someone different. That was his perspective. And you know, you're just like, what planet are you from? I mean, who, who thinks that way? So it's just a weird world and, and anyway. Quick follow up. What makes it worth it sticking it out with this selfish jerk? <laughs> and obviously that can, that can go for either one of you. I don't think either of us should answer that because that means that the other person is admitting the other person is a selfish jerk. <laughs> well, I, I, I think we've got that established. <laughs> so, but why is it why is it worth it? I mean, why is it worth it? Love. I mean, you know, part of the deal is is God is using Donna in my life to transform me and make me into him, his image. And I want that. And so I welcome the heat. I welcome the, the bumps in the road. Because I, I'm not who I should be. I'm not who I'm going to be in five years. You know what I mean? And I understand that. And it's just a lifelong process of becoming redeemed. And this is my beautiful tool. <laughs> and marriage is a lot more than just what it is for both of us. 
it's what God's picture is of his love for the world. And so um, if we just focus on are we being fulfilled, am I happy, it's a lot more difficult to stay focused on contentment. But uh, when we see that God is doing works and plans through our relationship and he's redeeming me through John and um, he's redeeming the world through our relationship and how we interact with others and the picture of our love for each other is a picture of his love for us. It just gets bigger than us and it just gets more satisfying. It's not so inward focused and selfish. And then kids too. I mean, you, you, sometimes you see people get divorced when they're like 45 or 50 and I'm like, really? You, but it's the kids. Oh, you stay together for the kids. The kids are gone, now we can get divorced. And so um, that's a weird angle there, but really, you know, family is part of God's design, and it's His tool to, to raise and impact the world, and so it's just great to have, have a, a fun family. Seth, Brooke, um, does everybody know why they're part of the panel? <laughs> tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourselves, just very briefly, as a couple. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Well, we're engaged. There you go. Already married. That's, Thanks, Brandon. That's, that's basically what it was after. That's basically what it was after. There's somebody else engaged. But anyway, um, you could tell. So very practically, uh, just kind of starting off with this question. Um, this was a question. How do you know you're ready to start dating? So how did you know? That's a good question. Yes, it is. That's, that's why I chose it. Um... How do we know that we're ready to start dating? Um, I guess by dating, um, do, you, do you think the question is more like going steady, like being committed to the person or going on dates? Boy, all I've got is the text here. <laughs> What's the context? Context. <laughs> start dating. So there's, so I, I think, yeah, in the context, thank you. Uh, this is, these, are, these are two people who know each other and they obviously have realized they enjoyed spending time together, but now they're going to start dating, which I take it is kind of a very intentional transition, a very key transition in the relationship. How did you know? Um, well, for, for Brooke and I, we started off as um, friends um, with no intention whatsoever to start dating. The funny story is when I first met her, I don't remember that. Um, we were actually in a group for the Go Project together. I remember everybody but Brooke. So there's pictures to prove it. I still can picture everybody but her. So it's a great story. Um, but one of the things is we were in the musical together. We got to know each other. Again, with no, like, it wasn't even on our radar. I, at least not mine. It wasn't on hers. See? Um, but um, after the Bible conference, we started talking, and I asked her out on a date. I asked her, like, let's go to dinner, let's, you know, let's go talk, let's go walk, let's go, let's go on a date, get to know each other better. And through that, we got to see qualities of each other that we liked, what we maybe didn't like as much. And big question mark, you know, do we want to go on another date? And we did. And um, that's when, you know, I started, like, freaking out because I was like, I think I could marry this girl. Wait, why am I thinking that? Stop it. Um, <laughs> And just like wondering if, you know, I was rushing it. And I think, you know, to answer that question, you don't know. You kind of feel it. But at the same time, it's going to happen if it's going to happen. I mean, you have to put yourself out there. Um, guys, don't be afraid to ask. Girls, don't be afraid to say yes. If anything, you're going to get a free cup of coffee out of it. So, <laughs> come on. So, yeah. Anything you want to add? Okay, so Brooke, let me ask this. Okay, so he asked you out on that date, and apparently you had a good and enjoyable time. And so then he's kind of, he's asking again, how did, how did, how did you, um, and so this is kind of related to another question. I mean, how did he communicate kind of clearly his intentions when he's starting to now ask you out on a date and actually make it not just things that we do together, but it's moving somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> um, well, even from the first date, like I kind of could tell, like we connect really well. 
um, from the first day. I thought I was going to, you know, want to make it official the first date. So I was ready for a second date, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know, he was just very intentional in his actions and, like, the way he treated me and talked to me. It was more than just, like, hey, we're friends, but I want to get to know you more um, on a deeper level, kind of. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, no, that's helpful. Thanks. Um, so another question here, and this is maybe kind of important on this campus, um, and you kind of alluded this, alluded to this when you said, "Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to say yes." How should dating couples or couples who are interested in each other deal with the pressure on campus to speed things up? All right, grab a pencil and grab a piece of paper and write two words. Stop it. <laughs> um, stop. I mean, no, not really stop. But it's evaluating where you want to go. I mean, for us, it, like I said earlier, I kind of knew, I was like, this is a girl that I could marry. And it kind of freaked me out a little bit just because I was like, am I moving too fast? And with the way Grace is, with, you know, this... Um, stereotype of Christians ring by spring, you know, getting married early. You have to evaluate and ask other people, am I somebody that's ready to get married? Like, if you were to look at me from the outside and even your closest friends, am I somebody that if you, like, were to look and go, eh, it, you know, is he ready to get married? Like, ask them. Ask people, like, is this right? Pray. Um, and then even talk to your significant other about that, but even just, you know, waiting is not a bad thing. Dr. Connolly said, you know, he would prefer if people waited a little longer going in counseling. That's not bad advice, so. Yes, go for it. John Eldridge, in uh, one of his books, talks about men and how in, in a culture where a lot of males are passive, they, they get into a relationship in order to answer the question, who am I as a man? And it's all backwards, because then once you start that, you're going to follow the lady, follow the girl, and follow your wife, and it's hard to, to lead from that position. He recommends get your, your identity issue answered, who are you in Jesus, and out of fullness, then you start dating and you bless the girl with stability, direction, and focus. And so I just, I've always um, appreciated that. Um, that's a nice segue into this question. Men are called to lead in marriage relationships. Um, so what does leadership look like in the relationship before you get married? Well, I mean, you can address that from your own history and then let Seth kind of say, here's how he's doing it. I can't remember before I got married. All right. <laughs> How long have you been married? 28 years. All right. I don't know how I led anything before I got married. I'm in our relationship. I'm not sure if it was just a casual thing. I don't remember, you know, setting out a three-point outline and a PowerPoint. Um, it wasn't that formal. Probably just by conversations and, and you know, obviously where church was a big part of what we wanted to do, and, and um, together we, we did a lot of things like that, but in Bible studies. Um, I think when, um, one of the things that I have to remind myself is being a leader isn't being the authority. Um, being a leader is just helping guide, and um, I think in our relationship, we both pull from each other a lot, but um, as I look into the future, one of the things that I wanted to work on was being the leader in the relationship. And something that you can do with that is <clears throat> encouraging Brooke to grow, not in a sense of a, you're so down here, you need to get up here where I am, but more of a, you're down here, but I'm right there with you. Like, we may be on different levels, but I still have to grow, you know, so let's do this together. Encouraging and leading together, not leading her. Does that make sense? I hope it does, because I'm not going to rephrase it. <laughs> Another little tip I picked up just a while ago is, is you can tell who the leader is in a relationship by who's asking all the questions. 
you don't have to have the answers, but you know, um, what are we going to do for the kids' education? Should we send to public school, or private school? You know, and, and it's just that's weighing on me. So I ask the question. You know what I mean? If the guy's never asking the question, the girl has the questions. Well, what, where are you? ESPN or something? You know what I mean? So, so I just I like that because it's just it's just a reminder to me. I get the freedom to just ask questions. I don't necessarily have to have all the answers, but I want to surface the questions and then we talk about it and pray together and, and then then we go forward. Yeah. Um, a little bit of developmental stuff that goes on in, in college. Uh, girls and guys are just kind of at different levels developmentally as far as who's more mature and who's not and who's more ready in the relationship and who's not. And so taking a little bit of time and, you know, getting your maturity level at the same level. But sometimes girls are a little bit more ready to get married than guys are. They're already processing it and they're married by the end of the semester and guys are like, whoa, that's not how, we're just having a fun time. So girls, in this leadership issue, sometimes you even have more leadership than guys do at this point. Let them learn to lead. And that's what John and I had to deal with. We went to a, a class when we were dating and talked all about this issue of men, male leadership and, and passivity, female um, being strong and controlling. And so that was something that kind of triggered us to go, whoa, we've got to flip some things around and we've got to start working on some things. So girls, you've got to give guys the opportunity to mature and grow into the leadership and let them read books on manhood, just different things, and um, just encourage you to kind of step back a little bit. Question came in in a couple of different forms. So let me go with this one. Uh, as a freshman, I was given the advice not to date in the first semester. What are the benefits to waiting a semester before starting a dating relationship? Or is it a bad idea to date, you know, in that first semester? To that, I guess. Um, again, don't. <laughs> the reasoning behind that is not so much as to take the fun away from dating. It's <clears throat> you've just stepped into the, into a whole new world where you met with new people, completely new environment, new classes, new workload, new schedule. Um, you're being pushed to mature in ways that you weren't before. Responsibility, and so you're learning a lot about yourself and through that, the person that you might be interested in is doing this exact same thing. And so it's like, I don't know, I don't have a perfect analogy, but you're just, the whole, and you're not ready, that's when you're not necessarily ready. There are times where people are ready. I'm not saying that every single person shouldn't do that. But I know that my freshman year, the crushes that I had, the girls that I were like, ooh, I like her, she's cool. Um, it didn't work out because I made my whole decision making about my actions, my friends, about impressing a girl rather than improving myself and improving um, in, in Christ. And it's about that identity. It's about learning who you are so that you can be a better person for that future person. I mean, if Brooke would have said yes to me my freshman year, I'd, I don't know where we'd be at now, but like, I don't think she would have said yes. I was a completely different person. Sophomore year, even second semester, your freshman year, a completely different person. Freshman, you're going to learn that second semester, there's going to be a lot of friends that you're with now that aren't necessarily going to be your closest friends next semester, just because life happens and things change. So, what's maybe the first bit of advice you'd give for somebody who is not in a relationship? nothing on the horizon, and just and is content being single. Just keep walking, <clears throat> walking with Jesus. Just keep, keep going on it. And if this person is just like, like there's a phobia, fear, and, and you know, you're, you're a recluse, well, that's an issue. You got to, like Seth said, run out and do stuff and have friends. But um, yeah, j just keep being yourself. And, and as we tell our kids, and sometimes you guys in class, you know, just run hard after Jesus, and you keep running. And after a semester, a year, two years, look who's next to you running hard after Jesus, and there's your pool. You know what I mean? It's, it's, um, it can be frustrating if you're like, okay, I'm a senior, I'm running hard, <laughs> there's no one around me. Uh, but that's a different thing. Okay, go for it. Enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> 
There's uh, just some neat things about not being dating and not being married, and you can just have wholehearted devotion to the Lord. You can do stuff with with uh, girlfriends. You can, if you're a girl, you can do stuff with girlfriends. If you're guys, you do stuff with guy friends. Guys, you can be a guy without having to be refined yet. So just enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you understand. I understand. Donna, before we got married, had the freedom to run off to um, British Columbia and lead Native American Indians on wilderness trips as a single lady. So it was just kind of a little white farm girl, awkward. But anyway, it was, um, it was something that she just had the freedom to do, and, and um, so that's what she's talking about. Um, Dr. Ramsey quoted uh, Genesis 2, it's not good for man to be alone. Uh, should we all get married? I think... <laughs> I think marriage is normal, right? As you look at scripture, you look at the world, marriage is normal. It's, it's I think, you should probably think I'm, I'm, I'm expected to get married, I should get married, unless there's some very specific things that God has done in your heart and your soul. But um, yeah, I would think, yeah, marriage is, marriage is normal. It's, it's God's design, it's God's plan, and it's not good for us to be alone. So I would say that that exception is super, super small. And maybe a reluctance to think about getting married is, is a fear issue or some other issue that, that Jesus wants to deal with first. But my response would be, yeah, kind of, kind of move in that direction. But it may not all be this year, so take your time. Ah. <laughs> or at college. Yeah, it could be afterwards. Of course, 1 Corinthians 7 just is running through my head. So, you know, but I mean, maybe we, we should have that kind of panel discussion some other time. Um, what would be your, uh, what would be your best advice? So since you're holding the mic, uh, for, for, for students who are married, I mean, or anybody who's married, we've got a couple of married couples. My best advice to yeah. people who are married? Yeah. It's kind of a general, like, I'm, I'm just reading the questions. My, my, I've, I've got my, the easy, I've what, got the easy our, part up here. Our advice to people who are married, save money. Exercise, <laughs> eat your vegetables. No, um, <laughs> maybe something a little bit more directly related to the health of your oh. marital relationship. You know, if you're married, I guess I would encourage your personal, individual walk with Jesus to be an ongoing, fresh thing. Um, you want to you want to maintain that. You want to stay connected to a church and a, and a small group of people that you can be accountable to. People you can say, man, what is the deal? Here's here's I'm just so frustrated and what do I how? Okay, that's just something I would encourage. Oh, I'm trying to. Th I give a lot of advice. I'm trying to think about what I like to talk about. One is um, again just allowing the man to grow into leadership because we're in a culture that's very feminist and very strong that way. And so um, I want to encourage John in his leadership. And sometimes that means me stepping back on some of the things that I want to do. That's what marriage is about. It's a lot of self-sacrifice. John gives up a lot of things for family. I give up a lot of things for family. And sometimes we have the little talk. It's like, I'm giving up more than you. No, I'm giving up more than you. No, but it's the kind of thing that you're just going to realize that it's so good to put aside your own personal desires sometimes and just give because that's there's great joy in it and the results are um, just joy in the relationships joy in your kids joy in family and joy in other people because it's all about service and christ gave up his life for us um, and that was the ultimate sacrififice I would also, you now that my brain's tuning in the question, really, you got to read some books and expose yourself to some good, solid material on, on marriages. I mean, whether it's, what's that, the blue book with your own mouth? Love and respect. I mean, there's, there's just so many good resources that can open your eyes while, while you're married. About how, how to figure this out, because you know, she functions on love, I function on respect, and if you don't understand that, it's just you know, nothing makes sense, and you're frustrated, you're confused, and she, she can say things that, that hurt my respect issue, and she has no clue, and, you know, I can... I, I can... Hey, Ben, could you bring me a couple of batteries? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I noticed that that was going, but yeah, maybe that was providential. Um, um, so let me, oh, I'm going to pass this to you, uh, 
best advice for people who are engaged. So maybe I should say, write this down for later reference. Uh, I would say, like Dr. Holmes said, to um, what's the word? <laughs> work on your relationship with Christ and building that, because if your heart's right with God, then you're going to be able to love um, your significant other even more um, in that way. Forgive a lot. Oh, draw out the time. <laughs> draw out the time. Got it. Um, Forgiveness is a lot of things. Um, there's many times where you get frustrated with the other person, and then like 10 minutes later, you realize that actually that you were the dummy that you did something. And so, like forgiving a lot and and honestly forgiving, not just saying yeah I forgive you, but to honestly forgive, and that's hard. It's it's something you have to work on. Um, the other thing is on the other end, you have to say I'm sorry. Um, and actually mean it, not just say, oh, you're mad, I'm sorry. Like, actually evaluate what you did and be um, introspective on what you're doing. Um, and that's what, I mean, that's mainly with conflict. But for engagement, again, it's just enjoying the time where you're not married and that you're still apart so that you're even more ready when you're together. How long did you date before you proposed? A year and three months, ish, yeah. How long did you date before you proposed? Three and a half years. We were off and on. It, was, it wasn't a clean, simple deal. There was, some, there was issues. So there's a story there. Okay. Um, so, so once, yeah, so how did you know then that the, I mean, when, it, when did it all come together? How did you know all those things had kind of been worked out and resolved and it was time to propose? You know, we had been apart so long. She was in British Columbia doing the, the wilderness thing. I'm in Texas going to school and just our paths never crossed and we dropped the ball communication. We drifted apart and, and finally a friend of mine said, hey, if you're not going to date her, I will. And I'm like, well, okay, no, I, I will then. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> And so uh, I kind of I kind of stepped up my game there, and um, but then so then anyway she moved to Texas, and we're in the same city. We can actually you know get to know each other, and then just all of a sudden I just like found my I, I have to marry her. I have to marry her. I, I skipped chapel one day in seminary and got a ring, and I just started just planning everything. And February fourteenth, you know. But anyway, got we got engaged, rock climbing, and so I don't know. It's just the the long process, and, and finally getting together. I just thought I just can't not. Girls are more ready sooner than guys. Yeah, she, she was so frustrated, like, what are you thinking? Quick little story, I had this, this uh, membership to uh, an outdoor magazine, like, like uh, or a, a company, REI. And if you pay like five or 10 bucks, you get to, to be a member. And, and so I said, hey, you should do this, it's great. You get discounts and stuff. And as a guy, doesn't that make sense? You're, you're sharing something you love with your girlfriend. Hey, do this, it's kind of a common thing. In her mind, she's like, well, Obviously, you're not thinking seriously about getting married because you would know if we're married, we only need one membership for the two of us. I'm like, there's no way I ever would have thought of that. So it's just kind of funny. What do we think, girls? So how did you know? I mean, so because when you first started thinking, wow, I really like her enough to marry her, and that kind of freaked you out. But how, so what happened to kind of say, no, no, that's, that's actually right? How did you know it was the right time? The minute I realized was when um, there was just one day where I was just thinking just about a lot of things, not necessarily with our relationship, but I was just like, I thought of Brooke, and then I was like, you know, I wonder, you know, is she someone I can get married with? And immediately there was like a yes, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and, and, and again, that kind of made me nervous because, you know, it's, it's that future, you know, a little bit worried, but excitement, and that in itself is nervous because you're so excited, and, um, and, and I, I wanted to check myself um, and check my heart and where, where it was at with that, and um, so that, that day, I can't remember the day, was when I was like, this is somebody that I want to marry. This is somebody that I can see me walking through life with until I get old and eventually not living anymore. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that was morbid. Morbid turn. Um, the morbid turn to the relationship. To but, off. I mean, it worked out for us um, just talking and um, seeing about the future, what it would look like. And for me, it was just kind of a gush dang and I'm still in school. And, like, not that that has to be a hindering thing, but for me it was at that time. And so. Brooke, did you, uh, did you know before he did? Maybe. 
Yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it wasn't like a specific moment where I was like, yeah, I know I want to marry him, but it was more of like a gradual thing, and I just saw that we worked well together, and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, on that note, I mean, now that I look at the time, we are out of time. Uh, we could do this. Uh, yeah, so I apologize for not getting to all the questions. Um, but hopefully this has just kind of been helpful to reflect and think about, okay, where we are, you know, in the, in the, you know, in the steps of the stage where God has us in our relationships, wherever that may be. Um, and so as you think about friendships, as you think just about, you know, the work that God is doing, um, our hope is that good godly relationships, whatever their nature, will be a significant factor of, you know, your Grace College experience. Um, whether or not, you know, um, you have already met or might later meet the person you're going to marry. But I'm not doing a very good point of transitioning here, so let me just say thank you for your questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to our panel, and go have a rest, good rest of the day.